Hello and welcome back to Mrs. Hunk's math class. I hope you guys all had a fabulous break and a happy new year. Um, we are beginning 2021 by moving on to module 6-1, lesson 1 in your new blue math book. We are dealing with ratios. You will notice um, it's kind of funny, even though we are quite a ways through the blue math book, we are on S1 because um, we're on the first page of this section. So if you need to go get your pencil and your book and whatever things you need to do that, go ahead and get those so we can get started on our lesson. So today, as I told you, we're going to talk about ratios. And the most important thing that you need to know about ratios, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and write this down up here on the top, is ratios is always a pair of numbers. And most of us know a pair um, consists of two. So, for example, my two numbers could be like this, two to three. Okay, I'm listing my two numbers. We have to separate them somehow. We can here put the colon here. We can also do two to three with the word two. And we're also going to learn in this module, you could also put the two numbers as a fraction. Okay, ratios, remember, pair of numbers. Pretty simple. Let's go down to example one where it says the co-ed soccer team has four times as many boys on it as it has girls. We say the ratio of the number of boys to girls on the team is four to one. So since boys was listed first, the number four goes with the boys. Girls is listed second in the story, so the second number goes with girls. We read this as four to one. What I'd like for you to do in this space here is we're going to make a table. So we're going to go ahead and write here for number, number of boys. And then we'll put here number of girls. And then we'll put for the last column total number of players. Now, if we look at the story here on example one, the number of boys we said was four. The number of girls, because there's four times as many boys as girls, would be one girl. Total number of players, four plus one is five. What would happen if I would decide to double that? Keeping the ratio consistent, if I would double the boys to eight, so if I had eight boys, how many girls would that make? Well, for every four boys, there's one girl, so I would say that there would be two girls, which leads to a total of 10 players. Okay, let's move down to the next, um, is that right down here where it says, suppose the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls on the team is, here's my ratio. Remember, ratio is two numbers, three to two. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's make another table here. Number of boys, number of girls, and total number of players. Okay, we have the two numbers three and two. However, we need to make sure we put the three and the two in the correct column. Is three for the boys or the girls? Well, let's read. Suppose the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls on the team is three to two. The first word that's listed is boys. So that means three goes for our boys, two goes for our girls, for a total of five players. If I would ask you to go ahead and fill in two more rows, meaning if I gave you six boys and nine boys, could you, by using the same ratio, figure out how many girls and total players? Now, most of you have been able to figure out that, well, if there are three boys and two girls, if I doubled the boys, I'm going to double the girls for a total of 10 players. Remember, for every three boys, there are two girls. Well, I have three groups here of three boys, three, six, nine. So if I had that many boys, how many girls would I have? All right, so we should have here a total of six girls, nine boys, six girls makes for a total of 15 players. 
All right, so pretty simple lesson so far. What we're going to do down here is I'm going to give you a situation and I'm going to ask you to write the ratio. Remember, the ratio is two numbers. I'm going to go ahead and have you write our ratios for today like this. So let's look at problem number one. The first story I want you to look at is I would like for you to write for number one, the ratio of chairs to tables. So if you look at my picture, you count the chairs and the tables. And it looks like to me I'm going to probably put here three chairs to two tables. If you gave me your ratio in this order, I would count it wrong. The reason why I would count it wrong is because it says chairs to tables. You're telling me there's two chairs by putting the number two first, so this one would be incorrect. So order is very important with ratios. Okay, second problem. How would you do this one? The ratio of pumpkins to broccoli. So you look carefully at the picture. The word pumpkins is listed first, so you needed to count the pumpkins first. Broccoli, second. Two to five. Okay, no words. Remember, ratios are just numbers. So let's look at number three. Donkeys to camels. Look carefully at my picture. The number of donkeys would be one. Camels would be three. Okay, number four. The ratio of wrenches to knives. Hmm, well, let's see. The first word's wrenches. It looks like there's one. And the number of knives are four. Okay, problem number five. The ratio of ladybugs to cockroaches. Well, let's look at the picture. Ladybugs is first. Looks like there's two. And then the last one I have cockroaches, there are two to four. Now remember, if I would have put four to two, that would have been wrong because I did not put them in the correct order. Okay, problem number six. The last one I'm going to ask you to do is I want you to think about your household where you live. And I would like for you to tell me the, and I'll write it here, ratio of girls living in your home to boys. So in my home, I have two girls, my daughter and myself, and there are two boys, my husband and Jacob. So I would put two to two. So for problem number six, put the ratio of girls to boys that live in your home. When you're ready, go ahead and turn over to the next page. All right, so um, since we're still in remote learning style right now, we're going to go ahead and cross out um, exercise one up here. And we're going to move down here. Ratios can be written for all kinds of different situations. So, for example, if everyone was in class, I could maybe take a survey saying, okay, how many of you um, have at least one sibling? And so I could make a ratio of students who have one sibling to students who have more than one or no siblings. Okay. So what we're going to do is, if you will notice, on exercise two, we have many different ratios. They basically have are the same numbers um, for, like for A and B. They're just reversed. But we're going to write a situation that represents 1 to 12. So, for example, if I look at 1 to 12 and I want to write a situation, I could write this one right here. Okay, so for example, the ratio I have is 1 to 12. This time, if you notice, I didn't use the colon. I used the word 2. My story is for every 1 year, there are 12 months. I have 1 and 12. I have them in the correct order. I could not write this situation for B. I could not say the exact same story. Why? Because 12 is listed first, and I had one listed first. So go ahead and write down my example, and then we will do the next one. Obviously, if I'm going to do it, I want to keep the same um, scenario. I could change it around and have it look something like this. Okay, so the ratio is 12 to 1. 12 is listed first. So my situation could be for every 12 months, there is one year. Okay, let's look down at the next one. I have the numbers 2 and 5. I need to come up with a situation for 2 and 5. Okay, 
Okay, so the example I have for 2 and 5, I said for every 2 weekend days, Saturday and Sunday, there are 5 weekdays. My story matches with my ratio. I had 2 listed first and 5 listed second. Okay, let's look at the next one. Well, this time if I wanted to, I could take the same thing. I could turn it around or I could write a whole new story. So I decided to do a whole different story. Um, I have here for every five female teachers I have, there are two male teachers. So I have a scenario with the numbers five and two. Okay, the next one is ten and two. How about if I would do this? For every ten toes, there are two feet. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to learn that when we do a ratio and we write uh, something to represent that ratio, we have to make sure that they are in the same order. You will notice that sometimes I wrote the word out for the number and sometimes I used the number. Okay, so for every 10 toes, there are two feet. Hmm, last one. See if you can come up with a situation for two to 10 and try not to use feet and toes. See if you can come up with something else. All right, so the story that I ended up coming up with is for two and 10 was for every two problems I can finish, there are 10 minutes that pass. Okay, so hopefully kind of summarize today's lesson. Hopefully you will remember up here that a ratio is an ordered pair of non-negative numbers which are not both zero. So remember, a ratio is a pair of numbers. We aren't going to use negatives, and they, which are not both zero. Okay? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson, and I hope you will be able to fill out the Google form, and I will see you guys tomorrow for math.